This is Dr. Mobin Sayed with one more episode of Long Story Short with Dr. Bean from the FLCCC platform. So the discussion today, I think you'll like it. This is a continuation of the paper, The Sleeping Brain, Harnessing the Power of Glymphatic System Through Lifestyle Choices. Today, we're going to talk about their main concept, and that is the sleep itself and how the glymphatic system during N3 sleep phase helps to clean the waste products from the brain and why that is important. So that is a discussion that we would do. In the future discussions, I will also discuss specifically in the context of Alzheimer. Today is a more general concept building and understanding of the importance of N3 sleep. And I would explain what N3 sleep is. So let's start. So this is the paper, The Sleeping Brain, Harnessing the Power of the Glymphatic System Through Lifestyle Choices. And if you go down here as they discuss, you would see a place where they would start discussing the concepts and mechanisms associated with sleep. I have already discussed the glymphatic system before. So if you have not watched that video, my request is to watch that. That is one video before this one. So I'm going to start from here. This is the flccc.net or covid19criticalcare.com. Over here, if you go to this area, the treatment and protocols, you see a lot of protocol. In addition to that, there is lots of education, educational videos, and so on, including these long story short videos. These are some related articles, some delta wave related diagrams, etc. Links are in the description. So let's start. Glymphatic system, good sleep, and brain health. So quick review of this diagram that we did last time. So this is, imagine, this is the incoming blood supply of the brain. Around that blood supply, there is a paravascular or perivascular system. All of these systems collectively that are surrounding the blood vessels are called paravascular systems. But this specific area surrounding a blood vessel is called perivascular system. So the paravascular system, we discussed it, it has a CSF that is coming in. Then within the blood, vascular system is, of course, blood. Then there are selective substances that are taken out of the blood system mixed with the CSF and that mixed fluid comes out of these aquaporin-4 transporters. This fluid that comes out, which is a mixture of select substances from the blood plus CSF, that washes the brain tissue as the brain tissue functions. And this convection current of the fluids then on the venous side gets absorbed back. I'm, I'm using absorbed as a loose term over here. Some of the substances go back and join the venous system and then some other substances, bigger debris, the proteins, beta amyloids, other such proteins, viral or bacterial debris, fungal debris, the inflammatory system mediators, all of those are washed away. The ones that are big enough not to be able to enter the blood vessels they go into the perivenous spaces and from there these are drained out as lymphatics and then go back to the venous system through the deep cervical lymph nodes. So this whole system of CSF then entering the brain tissue and then draining through the perivenous spaces, this is called glymphatic system. Why? Because it is glial associated lymphatic system and glia are these blue cells that are actually supporting cells for the blood vascular system. But they're also, they make a sleeve as well. So with this quick review, let's look at the sleep. When we sleep, in the early part of the sleep, when we are going to sleep, it is said that we have a greater sleep pressure. And because of that greater sleep pressure, we tend to have deeper sleep in the early parts However, deep sleep is interspersed throughout our sleep, but in the initial half of our sleep, the deeper sleep is more common, more frequent, and more in duration as well. So the sleep has various stages, N1, N2, N3, and then remainings are called N4 or REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. Rapid eye movement sleep, during which we are dreaming, is usually in the second half of our sleep. The Non-rapid eye movement sleep contains N1, 2, and 3. Out of these N1, 2, and 3, N3 is the most deep, meditative, and most restorative sleep. During this phase, N3, the brain tissue 
vascular system, CSF movement, breathing and heart rate, they all kind of synchronize to create a flow and pump the fluid through the brain to kind of wash it. So the first N3 step of the sleep usually occurs at about 45 minutes of you going to sleep or all of us going to sleep. Most of the time, the initial N3 phase is about 90 minutes. However, as the sleep continues, there are more N3 as well that are randomly interspersed and their durations continue to become lesser and lesser. Overall, about 20% of the sleep is made of N3 sleep. Now, N3 sleep is the slowest wave sleep phase or it is called slow wave sleep or SWS. So if you see here, this top one is the N3 phase where delta waves are more common. Delta waves are slow waves and they have a 0.5 to 3 hertz cycle. If you see here, the theta or the alpha or beta are more higher phase sleep cycles. So we are more concerned with this delta sleep. Now these delta waves and the N3 sleep is actually, can you imagine, predominantly babies sleep is N3 sleep. So they have a majority of their time in deep restorative and waste product clearing sleep. So they are building, babies are building, so they spend more time in cleaning and building and cleaning and building. So their sleep is mostly N3. Then as we start growing and aging, after puberty, the N3's sleep durations and frequency starts reducing. By 30 years of age, men actually have slightly lesser N3 compared to women. But generally, the N3 would continue to decline. And by 75 plus years, N3 has almost become absent. That doesn't mean that we cannot make an effort to make it appear, but generally because of the neuronal loss, they actually do not know the mechanism for why this decline occurs. However, they think it may be because of the neuronal loss that occurs with age, especially in the frontal cortex and the central parts of the brain. Now, some functions of the slow wave sleep. There are many, many functions of this one because this is the most deep and meditative sleep and more restorative sleep and the phase during which most of the clearance of waste products are done. The hormones are released. So there are lots of functions that occur. I'm just going to focus on some functions that are in the context of this paper. Number one, learning. So you would observe or the scientists know that when the delta waves are occurring, there are sometimes sharp spikes in those delta waves. Those sharp spikes are actually when they think that these are actually when our brain is recollecting the event and reliving the events to create memories from it. So learning is consolidated, memory is created and consolidated, metabolites are cleared during this phase. And as I said before, this is because of the sleep pressure that causes N3 to occur. Now during this time, neurons join in as well. So, so far we are talking about the N3 phase overall EEG of the brain. So, what are the neurons doing? Of course, neurons are participating in producing those electrical currents. And can you imagine now that those currents are pulsating at a very slow rate? So, if they are slow, that means the whole brain's activity is now rhythmic and slow. During our wakeful time, we, our brain is doing so many things. We are thinking, we are doing stuff, we are observing, we are, sensory systems are working. So we don't have slow and synchronized waves. We have more random, I shouldn't say random, but more wakeful waves, more alert waves. But N3, the neurons, they join hands together and they develop a rhythm of electrical activity, then delay electrical activity and delay. This pulsation or oscillation in turn also influences the movement of CSF and the CSF flow through that glymphatic system that I showed in the beginning that also starts pulsating and it the whole head and neck area becomes like a pump that is pumping, sucking the CSF in, moving it through the brain and then ejecting it and then sucking more CSF in and the washing process occurs. So large bundles of neurons, they coordinate their electrical activity and they start oscillating together as one unit. And this is called oscillatory neuronal activity. Remember, neurons normally do not act as a unit because they're not normally acting as a rhythmic system. 
they are working every neuron is just busy in something else so they are kind of doing their own thing but during n3 they come together and they become a pulsatile system these oscillations are 20 to 30 second and interestingly these oscillations match the activity of the n3 stage of sleep and of course it makes sense because the electrical activity from the neurons is responsible to produce the activity that we observe in eeg so now if i go back here that glymphatic system that we saw before they saw in vivo in mice that 90 percent 90 percent of the csf movement through the brain interstitium or the brain tissue 90 percent less occurs during the wakeful hour during the wakeful hour the movement of csf through the interstitial fluid and i have discussed this interstitial fluid in the csf and the lymphatic system in the previous video that's why i requested to watch that the 90 percent of that cleaning is reduced during the wakeful hour and it actually makes sense during the wakeful hours our brain neurons are not available to pulsate in a rhythmic way to then allow the csf to oscillate through the system these neurons are busy they're busy in collection of the memories and doing the activities and receiving the sensory system maintaining muscle tones and a bunch of more things that you do so they're not available they're not free to help with this so 90 percent of the clearance of the waste product is reduced during our wakeful time and during our sleep the proteins the waste products including beta amyloids that accumulate in the brain as the brain functions those are doubled in clearance during sleep compared to wakefulness so there is a human in vivo study that this article mentions so in this study what they did was they monitored the csf movement in humans using blood oxygen level dependent functional mri or bold fmri plus eeg plus csf measurement and they kind of correlated all of those and they found out that during the wakefulness csf flow had a pulsation of about 0.25 hertz but during the sleep there was 80 to 90 percent increase in clearance csf flow was occurring every 20 seconds in an oscillatory fashion it was peaking at 0.05 hertz and the pulsatile pattern was very synchronizable to delta wave so it seems like majority of that pattern occurred during the n3 phase and during this time csf flow through the interstitium increased it increased so much that in the paper they said this interstitial space expanded so this is as if you fill a balloon with a little more fluid that balloon would expand a little bit so the interstitial space expanded under that extra volume of the csf or this fluid which is a collection or mixture of csf plus some substances in the blood there was extra volume that kind of expanded the isf space or interstitial fluid space beautiful of course this extra surge if you will non-medical term of fluid going through the brain is going to wash away things then they did another study this is a mice study 20 mice and what they did was they had them have normal sleep and then they sleep deprived them and just one night sleep deprivation difference in mice was the following mice that were deprived for one night of sleep just one night of sleep they had significant increase in amyloid beta in hippocampus and thalamus hippocampus is an area kind of down here responsible for the memory and the new memory and the connection of the events to memory and so on and thalamus is of course another part that is in the center of the brain and is responsible with the sensory input and then relays of those inputs not only the beta amyloid increased in the sleep deprived in these areas but the chances of neuroinflammation and cognitive decline increased because these beta amyloids would accumulate in the system when they would accumulate like a debris i discussed this in the last lecture as well these would cause further obstruction to the flow of the fluids which in turn would cause sleep disturbance so sleep disturbance caused the beta amyloids to be accumulated beta amyloid accumulation in turn cause sleep disturbance and then that cycle becomes continuous this is why it is important that whenever we are sleepless we try to break the cycle otherwise it just feeds on itself and it can actually continue 
towards dementias and more intense or accelerated Alzheimer's. On the other hand, the mice, when they were sleeping normally, their protein, waste proteins, beta amyloids, clearance had become doubled compared to their wakeful time. So then the final point for today is how to have a good N3 sleep. And if you search for it or if you read various medical literatures or studies, there are many ways to have more frequent and better N3 sleeps. Some of those ways is to have a sleep schedule. Train your brain for going to sleep at a specific time, at a specific place, in a specific surrounding. Warm baths, more rigorous exercises, less daytime naps. So daytime naps have their own importance, but less of them. Low carb diet, meditations, and much more. I actually would discuss in the next couple of talks, one, I would discuss the relationship of all of these mechanisms to dementia and Alzheimer. And secondly, I would discuss the noradrenaline and the stress hormones and sleep in the context of glymphatic system. So with this, thank you very much. Stay safe, happy and healthy. And I would see you next time. Bye for now.